Amen. Uh, we talked about uh, on Wednesday night, we were going to discuss 2 Timothy chapter 3. And we read one half of one verse and then the two Sharons took over and we didn't even get to get any further. But anyway, today we're going to start a two-part series on perilous times. Perilous times. The goal of globalism is to destroy the United States Constitution and the individual freedoms it projects. They are winning and will continue to win until Jesus comes for His church. Is that defeatist? No, that's glorious victory. Let them have it. When Jesus comes for His church, they'll have their man, the Antichrist, the beast, who will give them their new world order that they want so badly. You know, it's like the child who you they want those cookies so bad so they climb up when you're not there and eat all the cookies and they have a stomach ache all evening and uh, mom says, well, was it worth it? And they look at him with at their mother with a sad eye and say, yeah. <laughs> But this time, I don't think it's going to be worth it when the people get their Antichrist, the New World Order that they want so badly. It's going to, be, it's going to turn out to be a nightmare and a disaster. Their goal for us is to occupy, or rather the goal for us, the goal for us is to occupy, stand fast, understand the times and be ready to depart. Paul talked about these things in our passage today. Paul talked about perilous times because they are certainly upon us, as bad as uh, they are now. It's going to get a whole lot worse one day. 2 Timothy 3.1, as Rick read, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. The latter times, the latter days, last day, last days refers to the time of the church, but more specifically, the days leading up to the return of Christ beginning with the rapture. The establishment of the church is referred to as the last time. 1 John 2.18 says, Little children, it is the last time, as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Now with the subsequent return of Israel to their land, I call it the last of the last days. We know the times because we know the scriptures. We know the scriptures that prophesy of Israel's return to their land and the world hatred of Israel and the alignment of nations. There is a world hatred of Israel called anti-Semitism. It's getting worse and worse all the time. People hate the Jews again. And why is that? Satan doesn't want Jesus Christ to be king of the Jews. He doesn't want them to survive the millennium, into the millennium, so that Jesus can't rule and reign in glorious Israel. Satan has some kind of uh, delusion that he can actually cause God to not keep his promise to Israel, which we know that's not going to happen. He has to know in his heart of hearts it's not going to happen. But he's sure going to give it a try. 2 Timothy 3, 1 This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Not may come, could come, might come, possibly come. Shall come. It will happen. Will happen. Difficult, hard, grievous, exceeding fierce. That's what perilous means. Difficult, hard, grievous, exceedingly fierce. The same word used in Matthew 8.28 when he was come to the other side of the country of the, Gitter, of the Gergesenes. There met him to possess with devils coming out of the tombs. Exceeding fierce. Same word for perilous times. Exceeding fierce. Just like that man possessed with the devil. The devils, they were exceeding fierce. These are fierce times. Troubling times. Times when the world is reeling. 
earthquakes, volcanoes in record numbers, wars and rumors of wars everywhere, rumors of wars and threats of wars. No compromising anymore. People will not compromise. Just Jeannie was on The View or some program like that, and Whoopi Goldberg cursed her after the... and they wouldn't let her talk. Just Jeannie's a conservative. I don't know if she's a Christian or not, but Whoopi Goldberg... Judge Jeannie said, cussed her foul language and told her to get out of the building. Whoopi Goldberg ran her out of the building. That's how much there is a division in this country and there's no compromising. Conservatives and liberals are miles and miles. There's a deep chasm between us. There's no getting past that anymore. Democrats hate Republicans and Republicans hate Democrats. That's just the way it is. Now, I'm not saying you hate. I'm just saying generally. Uh, there is no compromising anymore, and it's going to get worse. Perilous times, perilous times. We've got to understand the times. We've got to know the Scriptures. We've got to know what we're up against. We've got to know what the plan is according to the Scriptures. And the plan is... That these are perilous times. Peter, or rather Paul, is talking about these perilous times. He's giving a warning to the church at that time, but it is perfect for today. It's actually a warning for today because he's talking to the church at that first century, but he's actually saying the last days. So this is far into the future from the first century way into the future, the 21st century, when we see these perilous times have come. There's been perilous times before, people argue, the uh, Dark Ages and the Crusades and all the wickedness in the world. Uh, there's been many perilous times, but not like today, not to the level we have today where people just cannot get along at all. As I said, earthquakes, volcanoes, as far as we know, in record numbers, wars and rumors of wars, and the ability to make war is everywhere. Uh, the rise in technology has caused unprecedented evil and, in the world, and uh, you can argue now with your neighbor and not even see them. You can argue with them on Facebook. You can get mad at everybody on Facebook now, or uh, you can have a Facebook fight. Perilous times. What are we fighting about? The defense of the faith. Some of us believe the Bible and call ourselves Christians. Some people don't believe the Bible and call themselves Christians. You know, the Mormons used to not call themselves Christians. Today, they call themselves Christians. Jehovah's Witnesses never called themselves Christians. Today, they claim to be Christians. So, uh, the only way to tell if a Christian's a Christian or not is through the Word of God. You've got to get in the Bible and know the Bible. You can't know about the Bible. You've got to know the Word of God. That's what you have to do. That's the challenge to you in these perilous times. He said, this know also. So you ought to know it. You ought to know it. You ought to understand the times and what's happening according to the Scriptures. Christians don't panic. We don't get upset. Oh, just don't watch the news. Well, Jack, don't you want to know what's going on? Well, some of us can handle it. Some of us can't. I can't handle it. I get so upset. So I don't watch the news. I read the news I want to read. Well, Jack, that's getting a prejudiced viewpoint. Yeah, it is, and it's the one I like. Because it's what I believe. It's biblical. The characteristics of wicked people. We've got to understand the times. Secondly, the characteristics of wiki, wicked Wikipedia. The characteristics of wicked people. It's funny, they say, they call Wikipedia this great search engine. Wick. God. Wicked. It's almost Wikipedia. Uh, 2 Timothy 3 2 says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Now that needs no explanation. That's as plain as day. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. Perilous times. Men love themselves. Men, meaning the whole human race. They're number one. That's what you. We've been bombarded with advertisements all our lives about you deserve a break today, you deserve this, get something you've always wanted. It's all about you. That's how they, advertisers appeal, or they appeal to self, selfishness and the desire to please yourself. And that is 
you got to watch that because you will uh, fall into the trap of everything being about you. You know, uh, the first thing children discover, and it's the hardest thing for a child to discover, that he's not the center of the universe. 2 Timothy 3, 2 says they're covetous, fond of money. Of course, the world is crazy about money and getting all they can, canning all they get. It's getting worse. They're boasters, self-exalting, proud, self-importance. People are proud. They're, they're, they think they're so important. And uh, listen, when you check out of this world, you're going to be surprised uh, if you could come back and look at your funeral, how people are all looking at their watches, can't get wait, wait to get their funeral over with, get you in the ground. That's how important <laughs> you become. Blasphemers, attributing the work of God to men or Satan. These people are attributing the work of God, the miracles of God, the blessings of God to their own hard work, luck, or just to Satan himself. Most people attribute it to blessings of God, and I can't stand it when I hear people say, well, it was just hard work and luck that got me where I am. These movie stars and musicians, hard work and luck. It was a blessing of God, for without me, Jesus says, you can do nothing. John 15, 5. They're disobedient to parents, headstrong children, hateful to parents, ungrateful, unthankful, it says, ungrateful people. People don't thank others anymore. Uh, they don't care about the sacrifice of others for them. That's the NFL guys that kneel for the when the national anthems play. They're ungrateful. They don't care Amen. the sacrifice of others made for them. Unholy. There's no reverence for anything or anyone. The church, the Bible, the flag means nothing to people anymore. People are robbing and breaking and burglarizing churches more today than any time in history. People don't care to go in and rob a church anymore, or burglarize a church. They don't care. It doesn't bother them. Why? When I was growing up, uh, you didn't. You turned the radio down when you went by a church. You remember those days when we had our big sound systems in our cars? But you go drove by a church any time during the day, you turned it down. Automatically, reverence to the things of God. You. Without natural affection, 2 Timothy 3.3, 3, unnatural affection, perverts, homosexuals, sodomites, pedophiles. You know, they're wanting to make uh, pedophilia part of the uh, LGBT movement. They call it uh, minor attraction. Minor attraction. When I heard that, I thought, well, there's lots of women married to coal miners. I guess they have a minor attraction. <laughs> But this is talking about minors, M-I-N-O-R, little children. They're going to try to make them. You watch and see. If Jesus tarries in five, ten years, they're going to be part of the LGBT community. One church pastor, I heard him say, I actually heard him say on a program last week that we have to accept people that have these things and try to work with them and welcome them into our congregations. I'm not saying... You should hate people, or if people have problems like that, we need to love them and show them their sin. And if this is not right, you need to repent of this. You cannot do this. You have to repent. Truce breakers, not dependable, treacherous, faithless, can't be trusted. You know anybody that's not dependable at the place you work or did work? Do you know people that never show up on time? Not dependable. False accusers. You know who, what makes non, non-dependable people? Children that they don't keep a score on the scoreboard. What does that make you non-dependable? Undependable. Because who cares? They don't have to make the extra effort to win. If it's a bottom of the seventh and they're down by one run, they just go and say, ah, who cares? It don't mean anything. They're not going to try to step up and do the right thing. Uh... False accusers, slanderers. How much slander? Well, that's Facebook, isn't it? Slandering. False accusers. Incontinent. That doesn't mean you wear the pins. <laughs> no control of appetites or passions. No control of appetites or passions. Fierce, wild, savage, uncivilized. People today in these perilous times are wild, savage, uncivilized, fierce. 
Despiser of those that are good. Hate those that do good and make their good evil. They hate what you do that is biblical. They turn everything that you say and stand for the Word of God into hate. They are making us the haters. Christians are the haters. And it's going to get worse. They hate our good. Satan despises those that do good and try to follow the Word of God. And he's put it in the hearts of all these people to hate what you do. Jesus said you'd be persecuted. 2 Timothy 3, 4, traitors betraying one another, knowingly spreading lies about another. Well, this is Facebook again. Maybe this is the perilous times as Facebook is to blame for all this. Betraying one another, knowingly spreading lies about another. 2 Timothy 3, 4 continues, heady, rash, reckless, hasty, headstrong, uh, high-minded, conceited, headstrong. Again, no one can talk common sense to them. A high-minded person, no one can talk sense to them. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Gratification is their God. I learned a long time ago the way to lose weight is delayed gratification. And I'm still not doing it. But I know it. It means if you want that piece of pie, wait till tomorrow. Wait till tomorrow. Delayed gratification. Say, I'll eat that tomorrow. First thing in the morning. And you know what happens first thing in the morning? You don't feel like eating pie. So you, you see that pie sitting there that afternoon? Then you grab it. No. You say, well, I'll eat it tomorrow morning. Delayed gratification. Uh, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. We want it and we want it now. Having a form of godliness, 2 Timothy 3.5, the, uh, their idea of God is a God they've invented in their own minds. Man is their God and God is made by man. That is their form of godliness. They deny the power thereof from such turn away. They deny, laugh, and scoff that anyone could know God. That's crazy. Uh, Jesus coming to rapture the church, that's crazy talk. They deny the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and they vilify and laugh at the cross. Boy, I would hate to be in their shoes at the judgment, wouldn't you? People that have laughed at the cross. I think Hebrews 10, 29 talks about people that laugh and make fun of Jesus and His cross. 2 Timothy 3, 6, For this, of this sort are they which creep into houses. They pretend to believe the Bible and be Christians, and you invite them into your house. Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, false teachers, they creep into your house. And let me tell you who else creeps into your house. False teachers on television. They creep into your house. Don't let them into your house. Like the old timers said when they didn't like what was on TV. Put them in the dark. <laughs> Let's put them in the dark. False teachers creep into your house through your TV. And I like this one, 2 Timothy 3, 6. And lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts. Man. They trick women into fulfilling their own lust for sex and power. Hollywood producers and powerful influential men have given women advancement in exchange for sex. This is what's happening. And these women are now charging these men with rape. When they all know that most of them got to the top through giving sex for promotion. I'm not saying all women do that. No, no, no. I'm just saying it is happening. And now it's coming down on Hollywood. And these poor producers, I'm not, most of them are creeps and sexual perverts. But these women went along with it too. And look what's happened. Now they're all blaming each other. Uh, all these claims coming out now. 2 Timothy 3, 7, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. This is sad. We know a lot today. We have great technology. Uh, we know most everything that we can know. I mean, I'm not saying we've reached the limit. No, we, man can do great things. Look at the Tower of Babel. God had to come down and, and put a stop to it. But 
We also know fallacies, wickedness and treachery and lying. We are ever learning, but we can't learn the truth. We're expert at lying and wickedness and uh, falsehoods, false religions. We're good at that. We are good at coming up with new ways to deceive people while being deceived, deceived ourselves. Uh, ever learning. They don't know the truth because they don't know Jesus Christ as Savior. They're ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning. That's sad. Finally, they hate the truth of the Bible. 2 Timothy 3.8 Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, Paul gives us a specific example of two men who resisted the truth of Moses' time. Janus and Jambres are not named in the Old Testament, but according to Jewish tradition, they were two of the Egyptian magicians who opposed Moses in Exodus chapter 7, verse 11. Uh, they hate the truth of the Bible. Janus and Jambres withstood the truth that Moses gave them. Moses said he was sent by God to free his people. 2 Timothy 3.8 continues, So do these also resist the truth. The perilous times are coming because people will resist the truth of God through Jesus Christ in the Bible. They want to call the Bible as a book of love. The Bible is, is, has love in it. It's about love. But the Bible is about the redemption of sinful man. That's what the Bible's about. Through Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible's about. The Bible contains love. God so loved the world, that's why He sent Jesus Christ. But the theme of the Bible is the redemption of man through Jesus Christ. Amen. But they don't want to believe that. Oh, the Bible's a book of love. The Bible can't be trusted. The Bible is written by men. I hear that constantly. The Bible's written by men. Uh, yes, inspired by the Holy Spirit. How else would God do it? He gave us the Ten Commandments written by His own finger. He gave us the Bible written by His own hand through men. He says that these are men of corrupt minds that resist, resist the truth. Shameful thinking leads to shameful behavior. Ignorance leads to ignorant actions. Men of corrupt minds. They just can't think right. I feel sorry for them. I feel sorry for people today because they just can't get it right. I feel sorry for Whoopi Goldberg. She just isn't going to get it. She's all against the truth of the Bible. She's never going to get it. She's never going to understand it. Reprobate concerning the faith. Reprobate. That word is used in Romans 1.28. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do, to do those things which are not convenient, which are not right. God gives people over to a reprobate mind. 1 Corinthians 9.27 But I keep under my body and bring it in, unto, into subjection, lest that by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. The Greek word for reprobate is castaway. Castaway means disqualified, means disapproved after failing the test. A reprobate mind is unable to understand the influence and truth of God as they relate to the world. A reprobate mind is unable to understand the influence and truth of God in this world. They cannot understand it. They can't figure it out. That's a bad place to be, people. To not be able to see the truth of God in your mind. To not be able to reason out creation, salvation, redemption. They can't figure it out. They can't understand it. All these smart people were ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. We know a lot of things. We know incredible things. We know things that are amazing and we're learning things every day. Artificial intelligence. They promise now, the manufacturers, this is how far along AI is getting. The, the technology people have promised that they will not use robots to fight wars. And I've got swamp land at Coldwater to sell. Why would they say that unless they're already thinking about it? 
Listen, reprobate minds. Reprobate concerning the faith. They cannot understand the simple truth of salvation through Jesus Christ. They can't understand. God made it so simple a child can understand it. But you can't have a reprobate mind toward God. You resist God, so God gives you a corrupt mind. You resist the truth, you turn away from the truth, and God's going to give you what you want. Remember, Israel asked for a king. Samuel said, no, no, no. No, God doesn't want you to have a king. He's your king. We want a king like the other nations. Well, God gave him a king and all the kings were wicked except a couple. Our king is Jesus Christ. Amen. You remember when they wanted to crucify Jesus and Pilate said, I want to give you your king. He's your king. He's pointing to Jesus. And the crowd said, All right, we have no king but Caesar. Ooh, no wonder God was aggravated at the Jews. But He still has a plan for them. No wonder they destroyed the temple in AD 70 and God scattered them throughout the world. No wonder, but God loves the Jews, has a purpose for them. He's not giving up on them. If God doesn't keep His promises to the Jews, He can't keep His promise to you. And He will keep His promises to all of us. Perilous times. Perilous times are coming because people have turned from God and turned to their own lusts and their wickedness. Ever turning. This know also. Paul said you need to know this. That in the last days perilous times shall come. Shall come. Let's pray.